One of the biggest paradoxes in life is that the more you chase something, the more it runs away. And like, is there anything more annoying than this fact? Because at least in my life, when I look back at what has happened, all the things that I really appreciate and that I like and that I've wanted have come when I'm kind of detached from the outcome and just be like, okay, I'll get it or I don't. And I focus on something else. And lately I've been forgetting this and I've suffered so much. I've been like in so much stress and so kind of in this fear-based emotional state and I couldn't figure out why. And then I remembered, oh, it's because I'm actually trying to get it. I want to get it. And that makes the thing just run away. And especially when building a business, it's, it's crazy because you put so much effort, you do all the right things and still nothing works. And this has happened many times in my life. And then when you let go, then somebody calls you or, or you meet someone, they're like, yeah, yo, maybe you can help me. And it's like, how could I forget? And the crazy thing is that if you're in a positive state and you have everything is kind of good in your life, this never happens because you're kind of okay if the outcome arrives or not. But when you're in a stressful state, that's when all the issues kind of come. And it's like this survival mode. I call it survival mode. And then that, that's like all the negative emotions. And the opposite of that is potential mode because that's where all joy, all calmness, all excitement, all magic is. So what to do when you get into this survival mode? That's like horrible. And, and I've lived in it for so long that I had to kind of figure out a concept how to change it. And uh, I've found a mentor who also have had the similar problems that I've had and, and lived in these fear-based emotions for a long time. And it's all about your internal beliefs and your belief systems define what you think and what you think defines your emotions and your emotions define your action and your actions define your results and your results reinforce the belief. And this is the loop. And the more you do this loop in the negative, the more negative your life will be. And I know I've been in the negative loop for quite some time. And before that, I was in a positive loop and somehow everything just worked out. So now I've kind of digged myself this hole that I need to get out of. And I've tried all the things, all the tactics, all the strategies to get out of that hole in a negative emotional state. So I've tried to catch something. I've tried to catch clients, try to catch money and abundance and happiness and all this, but it doesn't work because my programming inside of my brain is faulty. And, and the programming is kind of the, the lens of which you see your thoughts because your mind is like a radio receiver. The higher your frequency, the better emotional levels you have, the, the better thoughts you're going to have. So the lower your frequency and uh, these emotional states, the, the, the radio receiver is on just like you only see and you think only thoughts based on that level. So the only thing anyone should do if they're in a negative state is to switch into a positive state. And how do you do that? Most people don't even know that they are in a negative state because they are so kind of used to it. They live in the familiar. I used to be there and, and I still go there sometimes. And 
I made a video about like being addicted to worrying and it's like the, the worst thing ever and I don't hope that for anyone. So how do you transition in from a, a negative state into a positive state? There are many different ways, but like exercise, uh, good food, good sleep, etc. But that don't necessarily rewire your mind. So I've created a framework for when you realize there's some limit and some negative emotion going on, some negative thought loop that once you identify it, you write it out. Then you make a new decision. You make a new decision like, okay, I had a limiting belief. I'm not good at making videos. And, and of course, if I make videos from that limiting beliefs, all my videos are going to be terrible and nobody's going to watch them and, and so on. I make a new decision. I'm really good at making videos and I get better every time I make them. Okay, wow, that gives me motivation. Okay, I'm good already. And the more I do, the, the better I get. So why just don't do like more videos? And then I start looking for proof. Prove from my own life. Okay, I was really bad at making videos when I did it the first time. And then I actually got better and my videos got better. And oh, I got recognition from somebody else. And oh, I, I looked at an old video and I was like, wow, that, that progress was really cool. So I write that down. And then the last step of the process is that I choose an action and plan some actions to reinforce this new belief this new decision and now that's like okay I will shoot a video and I will do it as well as possible okay and and this framework is I call it the IDPR framework identify proof no no identify decision proof reinforcement and if you do this enough times and every time you get into this kind of negative self-talk thing you can just take out the paper and, and pen and just write down okay what's the limiting belief okay new decision okay proof and action to reinforce it and the craziest thing is that you actually get into a more positive state you get into this excitement you're like okay i can do this okay i can do this yeah and then when you do the stuff you actually start rewiring your brain to see yourself in a more positive way. And there is this kind of rubber band effect on this thing that if you do it once, you might feel good and you might do it like for five days and then the rubber band gets you back and you're down in this hole and, and the hole feels even worse now because you have a contrast for how good you could feel. And this is why you need a tool, a system of how to get out of the hole again. And I know like at the moment I have about a week that I can go, go on in a positive state and I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do this. And then something happens and I just lose all my power. And I'm just like, wow, again, I'm back in this negative hole. I'm back in this survival state. I get all these fears. I get like, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna, wow, nothing's gonna work. And if I start doing things from that, it's just going to be like, please help me. And I don't say you can't do it. You can try doing and, and sometimes just doing something will, will switch you into the, the positive state. But having a tool that you can use and kind of write down and, and, and start like proving yourself wrong because it's, it's your ego that, that wants to keep you in the familiar. It wants to keep you... In, in the same situation, even if the situation is bad, you kind of feel good feeling bad, if that makes sense. So you have to prove to yourself, to your ego that's there to protect you, that it's safe to change. And that's why a lot of people who, who rewire their subconscious with meditations and, and all these tool hypnosis and, and whatever, the rubber band gets them back and 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 i've tried this i've i've done so much internal work the the, the past few years and nothing 
permanently changes me and until I've found this and uh, this concept is so simple well that was inconvenient my storage ran out on my phone so I had to readjust but as I was saying like none of these meditations and, and reprogrammings really permanently changed because every time I, I fell back in, in, in this hole of, of negativity I didn't necessarily have the time or, or the tools to, to just start going into a deeper meditation for 30 minutes. So that's why when I found this framework from a, a mentor of mine and I, I adjusted it a bit, it just made so much sense that you can have a tool that you can use whenever you feel this like negativity and when you feel that you need to start running after something. because. When you get into a positive state, it's kind of like, okay, whatever, I already feel good. Like, I don't need it. It's, it's cool if it comes, but it's, it's not like, I'm obsessed, I need this. So, letting go, and, and this is like the, the, like people have said it to me so many times in my life. You just need to let go. And I'm like, I don't know how. My analytical mind keeps me in this loop because of the the beliefs and the the thing that kind of runs my brain and if i don't change that i can't get out of my analytical mind and i don't know if this is a thing for for men and and at least i have a really analytical brain and to get out of that analytical mind and and kind of over logical i need to feel good because if I start stressing, I'm just like, start controlling and be like this, ah, I need to, to figure out this. So the whole point of this video is to kind of remind you that if you're chasing something, it's like maybe you should try to let it go and focus on something else. And most probably the thing that you want will show up to you. And I have so many experiences in my life when I was a snowboarder and uh, I wanted sponsors, but I, I kind of just forgot that I wanted sponsors and, and just focused on the snowboarding and then the sponsors came. Uh, this trip that I'm on, or I, I live in Bali now and I was totally, I let go of the idea that I would come on this trip that I, I thought that I was going to be in Finland the whole last winter and I let go of it and suddenly just like out of nowhere it it arrived and this is what I want to help people understand because I want to help myself understand this I want to go deeper this I feel it's my purpose to kind of battle the analytical mind the over logical because in this logical mind and logical world, there's no magic because no, it's, it's science. It needs to be counted. It needs to be aligned with the numbers. But actually, all the fun things in life are on the other side of logic. And that's why I love to, to drink alcohol and, and just get wasted because like my logical mind would just whoo fly away and I would just have fun and enjoy and and now when I, I haven't drink in like six months now the real work starts how can I get into that state that I get from alcohol or other drugs when I'm without anything and this is what I'm working on and uh, if you're interested in learning more about the subconscious mind and how to actually change and and how it's even formed in your childhood i have a free project it's gonna be in the in the comments and in the description so you can check it out there it's free of charge and uh, i've gotten good reviews from it so check it out and let me know what you think uh, i'm gonna gonna drag this video out too much but just a reminder if you're chasing something if you if you're obsessed with wanting it, wanting it, wanting it, like from my experience and what other smarter people than me say, 
you need to learn to let go of the outcome you need to focus on doing and being like all the the things that you that can take you towards that goal but the outcome should be like a question mark and if you can do this i promise that your life will get better because this is what i'm doing right now i'm just leaving it up to chance and it's kind of like you have to trust in the universe in the higher power god whatever you want to call it because if you don't trust in anything external then you're back in your logical analytical mind that's actually just like small so open yourself up to wonders and magic and you might be surprised my name is Mitz please like this video if you liked it share it with other people if you think it's valuable check out the limiting beliefs project and uh, i'll see you in the future video peace out have fun